I joined Akash in 9th standard. Mm -hmm. So I joined early, I gave Anthony eight standard. Pretty much a game changing moment for me. Now I'm competing all across India. I'm Aishwarya and in our class today, we are going to be continuing with the chapter Respiration in Organisms and we are going to be learning about how some other organisms like plants, cockroach, earthworm and fishes, how do they breathe, right? So that's what we are going to be learning in our class today. Yes, I can see that a lot of you are here already. So can we make me a little more bigger on screen for the intro? Yeah, so while they make me big on screen, I can see that Ajit is here, Abhinav, Arshnur, Ma Mane, right? Okay, that's Ajit, it's himself, all right, okay. Purna is here, Sneha is here. Amazing, I can see a lot of new names that are there. All right, I can see Jakub, Dafina is here. Hello, hello. Yes, there's this Tanya. Hi, Tanya, Arohi. Lot of new names. Pranesh is here. Welcome. Welcome to the class, everyone. Am I audible? Am I visible? And what I'm writing on the screen? Are you all able to see this very clearly? Yes? Inshara is here. Okay, that's Inshara, Aditi. All right. Okay, Purna is a new subscriber. Welcome, Purna. Welcome to the class. Yes? All right. Is it visible? Let me quickly refresh my screen on my phone as well. All right. Amazing, amazing. Aditi, welcome, welcome. So all of you who are new to the class, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button. You hit that like button also. Now, in case if you think, okay, ma'am, should I really hit that subscribe button? Do I want to stay subscribed to by June 6 to 8? then I would just recommend that you watch this video till the very end. All your, you know, maybe small doubts about staying subscribed to the channel will go away. Because trust me, at Baiju's and in the 6 to 8 channel, we believe in giving amazing quality education to make sure that even the smallest of smallest concepts you understand to the best, which is why we, may, we tell you that in case if you don't want to subscribe now, it's okay. But I'm sure at the end of the video, you will definitely want to subscribe, right? Yes, Anita is here, Prakush is here, all right. I can see right now there are about 25 students who are watching the class. That is amazing and I want this number to hit more, okay? So share this video link with your friends, tell them to come and watch this video because although this is a very simple topic, I'm telling you by the end of this video, you will definitely be able to understand what do we mean or how is it that other organisms are able to breathe, right? And what is this respiration and how is it different, right? Okay, Veera has just joined. Not a problem, not a problem. So just make sure you have your notebooks and pens ready with you because we're going to get started with the class, okay? Now, for those of you who have still not registered for Anthe or who are listening about Anthe for the first time, please make sure that you may get registered for it, right? So we have Anthe Crash Course, which is started. That will be there all through October because you know that Anthe is a Kash National Talent Hunt exam that is happening in November. So it's starting from November 5th, right? And you know that this is going to be a competitive exam mainly for the 7th and 8th graders. And I would recommend that you give it a try because you have 100% scholarship cash rewards, mock tests, right? There's a lot more and a lot of interesting questions where you learn how to solve application based questions as well. So this will be a real level up from all the concepts that you are learning and maybe even, you know, to an extent, the kind of questions that you may get in your exams in school also. It will be a level up from that. Yes, Purna has already registered. Brilliant, brilliant Purna. Tell all your friends also to register because the registration is absolutely free. And if you want to send it, right? If you want to tell your friends to register, send them the link. It is there in the description box. Yes? Oh, Somna, that's so sweet of you. You're very kind. <laughs> yes, amazing. Today is Menti. No, today is not Menti because today we have some more concepts to learn. No, so today is going to be a conceptual academic class. So I want your notebooks and pen ready with you so that you will be, it'll be easy to start. Okay, and easy to learn, I would say. All right, can you give me a quick number, Bhagirath, on how many students we have on the live? We have 26 students. The number should keep increasing, okay? 
Yes, yes, we're starting. Okay. So now, of course, in our previous classes, right? So in the previous class, we started off with understanding about respiration. And in our previous class, we also learned about the human respiratory system. And we know that respiration is a chemical process that is there wherein we know that glucose gets broken down in order to release energy. And we know that in our body, right? So let me just move this aside. Yeah. So we know that in our body, we know that oxygen is made available for this process of respiration by the respiratory system. And we have all these different structures in our respiratory system. And the main respiratory organ is the lungs, which facilitates all of this process, right? Now, of course, we know that as a byproduct of respiration, carbon dioxide is released, right? And this carbon dioxide is also given out through the same respiratory pathway. Now, this was about humans, right? We learned about the human respiratory system. But what about some other animals? Like, for example, if I take the example of lions and maybe elephants and giraffes, do you think they also have lungs? You can tell me in the chat, right? Do they also have the lungs that are there in their body? Yes or no? Very quickly in the chat. Very good. Purna is telling me crocodiles. Yes, very good. Others, come on. Do you think we will be finding it? Yes, very good. Of course they do. Sneha is telling no, not at all. See, for example, in the case of the examples that I gave you. I told you about lion, right? Then I told you about the elephant. Yes, and let's take maybe some other mammal as well, right? All of them, they do have it, yes? So in this case, animals such as elephants, lions, cows, goats, okay? I am going to remove these examples, okay? All of these examples, right? So maybe we'll keep snakes, birds, right? We see that they all have lungs, all right? And they have this chest cavity in them as well, which helps them breathe, right? Which means that they do have respiratory structures. Now, one thing is that, Maybe the way the lungs look inside our body, they may not look exactly the same. It will be slightly modified, but nonetheless, they all have lungs to breathe, right? So it is important that you understand this. But what about some other animals? You see, I scratched out frogs, I scratched out lizards, right? And of course, maybe not lizards, but I'm going to scratch out frogs for sure, okay? For now, okay? I'll tell you why later. Now, when we talk about some animals like maybe the frogs, right? Or let's take some other, some other animals. Maybe like fishes that are there, right? Or maybe some earthworms. There are all these slimy, slimy worms. How many of you have seen them? How many of you have seen slimy worms? Need not be earthworms, but we've all seen worms, no? They're all very small and slimy and they'll be crawling around everywhere. How many of you have seen this? Yes. Mm, Anita says me. Yes, very good, very good. Somnath has also seen this. We've all seen worms, no? They're all in and around our house, right? Yes, very good. In the rain, right? We have fishes. We see fishes in the aquarium. Yes, we find fishes in the pond. We find fishes in so many, especially we find fishes underwater, right? So we see that fishes are there underwater, right? Yeah, they're not so good looking. See, there are some things which are even, some, some, there are some insects which we will also be learning about, right? We have frogs also. You remember I scratched out frogs in that example earlier? We have frogs, but frogs are a very interesting and edge case example. But like some of you told me, no, they're not very good looking. I'll tell you an example of something that is not good looking and something that most of us don't like. They are cockroaches. <laughs> See, the cockroach is right on top of me. They are cockroaches. How many of you have seen cockroaches? I'm sure everybody will tell me, ma'am, I have seen it. And some of us, we get very scared, like me. If I see a cockroach, especially one flying in my direction, I am in the opposite direction. I am running far, far away. I don't like cockroaches. I remember that sometimes when cockroaches have come, I remember I'm very old now. I'm in college and, you know, I'm an adult and still I'll be standing on top of the chair and I'll tell my mother, you, you know, come with a broomstick and kill it, right? Yes. Oh, no, I'm not like that. <laughs> Now, most of us don't like. It'll be there in the kitchen, right? It'll be crawling around here and there, right? Yes. And there are some very good-looking organisms also, like our plants, right? Plants and all of that, we see that they don't have lungs. Where is space in all of them to have lungs in them, right? So, if lungs are there, right, or if lungs are not there, how are these all organisms able to breathe, right? 
That is what we are going to be learning today. And all the examples that you see on screen, these are the examples that we are going to be learning about. And it's going to be a very simple class. This is not tough at all. You have nothing to worry about. So in our class today, three broad topics to cover, right? We'll be learning about breathing in other animals, how fishes are able to breathe underwater. And of course, do plants also respire? So these are three topics that we're going to go, right? Very simple and easy. Now here, of course, we have Alex in a situation and we're going to start off with a very simple organism that is the cockroach. Now it's a simple organism, but not a very light organism, right? Not a lot of us like cockroaches and, you know, as a matter of fact, some of us don't even like insects. There are so many insects that when we look at it, we get scared also. There are locusts, right? Then there are some, sometimes there are people who are scared of grasshoppers. I'll be honest, I'm also scared of grasshoppers. When I see a grasshopper, I get very scared. So insects in general are something that scare me a lot. And what is the most intriguing part of insects? Yes, thank you for that persistent. I think I have that, right? So what is, the most what is the most interesting thing that you spot? Like nonetheless, we see that insects are very small, right? And in the case of cockroaches, these are insects that have survived even when the dinosaurs were not able to survive. You imagine that. These insects have been there for centuries, right? Yes, they have horns, okay? More likely we say they have antenna, right? Yes. Now, how do they move around? How, how Can you to quickly tell me how do these cockroaches move around from one place to another? Yes. Very good. Very good. I can see some answers coming in. Today, the chat is very quiet. Very good. With their legs, right? They use their legs to move around. So, we see that they are able to not just walk around, but we see that they are able to climb, right? They can go up, they can climb over different, different things. Some cockroaches, like I told you, the ones that I don't really like are the ones that can fly, right? But if you see, cockroaches have a very simple body structure, okay? So they have a very simple body structure and interestingly, they don't have any, what do you say, complicated organs like us. We have a very, you know, detailed digestive system that we have learned about. We have a very complex respiratory system which are made up of so many structures. But in their body, everything is very simple, right? Their body structure is also very, very simple, right? So we see that these cockroaches also have a respiratory system, okay? So we see that they have a respiratory system. But in this case, we see that their respiratory system is not with very complicated organs, right? We see that in this case, they are made up of simple, or I would say that they are made up of a network, right? Which means there are many network of tubes, okay? So they have many, many tubes that are there inside their body that help in transporting the air, okay? And we know why this air is needed, no? Because air has air is rich in oxygen and oxygen needs to enter to each and every cell of the cockroach's body so that at the end of the day, they are able to climb, walk, fly, whatever they want to do. Because all of this requires energy. We should never ever forget, right? Energy is needed. Yes? You've never seen it fly. Oh my God. Teju, I have seen it fly. It's very scary. Once they've come flying into my room also. Yes, very good. I can see the answers coming in. They breathe through spiracles. Very good. So we know energy is required. We know that for energy to be formed, oxygen is needed. Oxygen is nicely there outside in the air. It needs to enter. Now we see that on the sides of their body, we see that there are some small openings, right? So we see that on the sides, there are these small openings known as spiracles. Now remember, spiracles are found on the sides of the body, okay? So if this was a cockroach's body, like as you can see, I'm going to draw it here. They are present on the side. Now, if you ask me, ma'am, how many spiracles are there? With respect to insects, the number differs. Okay, it's not that there's a fixed number of spiracles, it differs. Okay. Now, we see that these spiracles that are there, no? So, important to understand, insects such as cockroaches have small openings on the sides of their body known as spiracles. Are we clear where it is present and how many are there? Very good, they have 18. Now, how does this spiracles help? Now, you see, like I told you, spiracle is a small opening. 
and they lead into tubular structures. At the end of the day, their respiratory system is nothing but tubes, right? So we see that they enter into tubular structures that you see here known as tracheal trunks, okay? Now tracheal trunks are these big tubular structures that you see. So this opening here is your spiracle and then you have your tracheal trunk, okay? So they are bigger tubes. Now these tracheal trunks that are there will keep further branching out. It will keep branching out into thinner and thinner tubes. So understand this is very thick. But as it branches out, right, it will become thinner and thinner and thinner, forming something known as tracheoles, all right? So they end in tracheoles. And these tracheoles that are there act like alveoli that we learnt about in our body, which facilitate gaseous exchange, all right? So basically, air rich in oxygen, so I'm going to use white color, will enter, it will go all the way here, reach all the cells that are there. And we see that once oxygen gets utilized, we see that, you know, once all the oxygen is utilized, carbon dioxide is given out and it will go back through the same way. Are we clear? Trachea is the insect. Yes, tracheal trunks to be more precise. Are we clear everybody? Yes? Is this clear how breathing happens? So this is breathing in and breathing out, okay? Spiracles are just the openings through which the air will enter and exit. So here's a quick flow chart as well. I'll be sharing this to you on Telegram also so that it gets easy, right? So basically we see that oxygen is entering through the spiracles, it will reach the tracheal tongues and then of course we see that it will reach the cells and we know that it will enter by the process of diffusion. We know what is diffusion, no? Now how many of you are confused with the term diffusion? Let me know in the chat box. How many of you are not sure about what is the process of diffusion? We had discussed this when we were learning about our, uh, when we were learning about gaseous exchange and alveoli. How many of you are not sure? Please tell me in the chat. I'm going to explain once again because this concept is very, very important. Okay, lot of you are still very uh, confused about what is diffusion. Yes, very simple example. I can see Persistent is already giving me and helping me out. Thank you so much, Persistent. So think about it. If you have a deodorant, right? So imagine this is my deodorant, okay? And I am spraying deodorant everywhere. We see that deodorant molecules, right, whatever small molecules are there, they are more in number. But when I spray my deodorant, although this is sanitizer, I'm pretending it is a deodorant, okay? So we see that when you take your deodorant and you spray it everywhere, we see that eventually the whole room will smell like that. It's not just that it's concentrated here. So what happened? Very simple. We see that from the molecules that are there, right, think of it as small particles. These particles that are there, we see that from where it is present more in number, it has decided to go to some place where it is less in number. So here are a lot of particles. Some of them are like, oh, I have space there. So let me go there as well. So slowly they will move. And this is a free, uh, what do you say, free movement. They're just happily moving. They don't take energy. They'll just move around. This is what we call as diffusion. So what is diffusion? I'm going to write the definition on the screen. You can take a picture of this. So we see that diffusion is the process by which molecules, I'm using a, a you know proper scientific word here, molecules move from a region of high concentration, which is nothing but more amount to a region where they are present in less amount. And this movement that I'm telling you about is a free movement that is there. All right, so this is what we mean by diffusion. Now, in this case, when we talk about it, right, so I'm just going to go back. I'm going to use this because I have more place. Now, in any case, what happens here is that, so let's imagine this is a space, all right? So I'm going to make it like an alveoli so that it makes it easier. We know that when we breathe in, right, or when air enters, it is rich in oxygen, right? And here amount of carbon dioxide that is there is relatively less, no? And we know that it has to go from place of more amount to less amount, right? Which is why we see that oxygen will diffuse into the bloodstream, okay? But in the case of carbon dioxide, we see that carbon dioxide is present more here than here. So it will go to a place where it is in lesser amount. 
विच इज वॉट वी मीन बाई डिफ्यूजन इट इज डिफ्यूजिंग इन डिफ्यूजिंग आउट इनवर्ड मूवमेंट आउटवर्ड मूवमेंट आर वी क्लियर ना विद डिफ्यूजन यस Are we clear, everybody? Are we clear with this concept? It's a very important concept because if you say diffusing into body tissue, we should know what it means, right? Give me a quick thumbs up on the chat. Very good, very good. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. All right. So this is what we mean by diffusion, and this is how exactly it happens in cockroaches. And once it reaches the body tissue, we know what will happen. No, we see that glucose will also be there inside the cells. Glucose will get broken down in the presence of oxygen, right? And we see that it, we, or glucose gets broken down to release energy. And energy will be released. Yes. So that is still the same. Respiration and what is happening is still the same. Okay. Wonderful. So now we have learned about cockroaches and the role of spiracles. Now we'll move on to the next organism, right? And that is earthworms. So how many of you have seen earthworms? Yes. Give me a quick yes or no on the chat. How many of you have seen earthworms? All right. Very good. Very good. Yes. Lot of you are saying me, me, me. Wonderful. Wonderful. So they all tend to look something like this, no? they'll be looking wait let me just play this video so that you can see right okay let me just go back yes can you see how it slowly moves no the earthworm will be slowly moving it's very very slow some of you are saying ugly say let's not call organisms ugly right because yeah that's the way nature is except for cockroaches because most of us don't like it so i'm i should not be saying this as a biology teacher but i do understand everybody has a fear but let's not also call organisms ugly or anything let's just say that that's the way of nature right it's a way of nature like how persistent was also telling we shouldn't be calling animals ugly no so it's important that we don't say that yes when we lift them they are very slimy thank you for that manas very very important point when you lift it as you can see it looks very slimy right so the surface looks very slimy right yes looks like a mini snake very good yes it looks something like that now why are we saying mini snake because we don't observe any limbs right so we see that there are no limbs no hands no legs yes nothing of that sort is there right so why is it slimy is the question and dilip has already answered very good so we see that their body secretes a certain liquid or to be more precise we see that it secretes a certain slimy thing known as mucus all right it is mucus and viscous like which makes the surface of the skin right it makes the surface of the skin very very moist so if it is very moist we see that this helps in the entry and exit of air now the thing is they do not have any respiratory system which means they do not have lungs or anything like that but they don't have spiracles also they don't have those small tiny openings but instead like how i have rambabu rabat so you have to quickly remind me your name you told me but i forgot so you can quickly tell me how rambabu rabat is telling us right instead they breathe through their moist skin very good that is exactly how they breathe right so that is why their skin is moist so we see that air from the outside which is rich in oxygen will enter through the skin then it will get distributed throughout the body so that you know we know that respiration can take place and finally all the carbon dioxide that is there will be given out yes very simple and easy tanya thank you for that tanya so it's important that you say that earthworms breathe through their moist skin this right here is your key word right Yes very good they have only muscles and they have no bones very good so here's a quick question for all of you you have 30 seconds and i want you to answer for me before we go ahead right so which of the following organisms have a network of air tubes called as trachea or i'll just rewrite this to tracheal trunks 30 seconds is it earthworms frogs fishes or cockroaches yes this is a very easy one earthworms i'm talking about air tubes right and i'm saying tracheal trunks very good you have 17 more seconds yes all right so today very good everybody very good all of you are saying ma'am we know the answer this is such a easy question wonderful 
The correct answer here is option D, cockroach. Moving on to another question before we wind up. Exchange of gases takes place through dash in earthworms. Is it skin, gills, nose or lungs? I know these questions are very easy peasy. You, are, you all are so smart. No, I know that you guys will all get it. Very good, very good. Yes, very good. I can see the answers coming in. A, all right. Okay, I am going to wind this up before you tell me also. Time's up. And the correct answer is option A, skin. But how many of you think that this option is not properly written? What should be the answer? Yes, what should exactly be the option to be for this to be the correct answer? What do you think we should write it as? As biology students, will you only write skin or will you write something else? Yes? Very good. Will you write skin or will you write something else with it? Wonderful, wonderful. It is moist skin or slimy skin. So more than slimy skin, I prefer that you write moist skin. Okay? Do not forget, this is your key word, okay? In your exam, especially when you are writing this answer, write moist skin, all right? Very good. So far, easy only, no? Everything is very simple and easy. We don't need to worry about anything, yes? Now, we're going to move on to the interesting parts. I might take about another 15 more minutes and then we'll wind up. It's very simple and easy, okay? Yes, very good, everybody. Very good. So before I go ahead, I want a quick excitement level check, right? Are we still excited? Are we finding the topics easy? So I want you to go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Yes? All right. Yes, Dilly. We are going to be learning about the fishes, but I want you to give me a quick excitement level check, right? I always do an excitement level check. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for that. Yes, nuclear excited. Oh, that's another level of excited that I'm seeing right now. Oh, oh Laksh, what happened? Why the angry face? Yes, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Now, let's move on to fishes, just like how Dilip told us, right? So, we know that fishes are such beautiful creatures, right? How many of you have fishes at home? Any of you who have fishes at home? Yes, maybe like a small fish pond you have, maybe like an aquarium that you have. Any of you have that? Yes, I can see that Bhagyadar Ojha says me. Anita also has it. Tejas has it. Dilip has an aquarium at home. That's beautiful. Are these goldfishes? Yes, more so. Not exactly. They're not goldfishes. They're not goldfish. No, some of you don't have. Even I don't have, right? They're not goldfishes here. Yes, Manas, they are clownfishes. Very good, very good. Very good, everybody. Very good. So, some of you have fishes and we know that a lot of fishes that are there, right? I wouldn't say lot. All fishes, as a matter of fact, they live underwater. Now, of course, sometimes we admire the fishes for surviving underwater. But if we were to go swimming, right, we need to hold our breath. And you know, when we go swimming also, sometimes when we go swimming, we'll be underwater, but we keep coming up to take deep breaths, right? So how many of you have felt that when you go swimming, this has happened to you? Yes, very good, very good. You're already giving me the answer. You're all ahead of it. We know why we are not able to do it, no? Yes, Madhu has also felt that. Very good, Manas has felt. Yes, for those of you who swim, this is a very easy thing. Now, we have to struggle, keep coming up, going down because we need to come back for oxygen, right? We need oxygen to survive. But fishes, on the other hand, utilize, like how I'm seeing the answer on the chat, they utilize dissolved oxygen. Yes? So, they utilize the dissolved oxygen because oxygen as a gas has the ability to dissolve in water. And like you are all telling me the answers, we know that fishes have certain structures known as gills. Now we see that these gills are normally like a network. So we know that they are like network of tubular structure. So basically, you can imagine many fine networks like this. Now the interesting thing is, now in the case of spiracles or in the case of moist skin, we saw that air is entering through the spiracle or the air is entering directly through your moist skin. In the case of earthworm, right? But in fishes, that is not the case. Because the air does not directly enter through the gills. But rather, we see that it enters through the mouth. 
so we see that fishes take in water which has the dissolved oxygen okay and it will enter through the mouth all right and we see that it will then go to the gills that are there right and these gills they are richly supplied with blood vessels which means all that oxygen that is there you know it will go into the blood vessels and from here we see that the blood vessels will be transporting the oxygen to different parts of the body so you need to understand and this is the point where you may tend to get confused is how it enters right so they take it through the mouth so if they take oxygen through the water with the gills if there will be no purifier in aquarium then fishes will die right and they respire with their gills so in the case of an aquarium see the reason why we need to have a purifier is also because like you told me right they take it through the water so we see that we need to make sure that any impurities are there are removed at a constant time and another thing is again when we are putting it in an artificial environment like an aquarium no it's not as easy as how it is in nature now because it's an artificial environment they will have more time trying to survive there that is why sometimes you know they may tend to get affected by their environment right yes and finally all that carbon dioxide so we see that oxygen gets distributed to different parts they get utilized for you know respiration carbon dioxide is given out and it will come back to the gills and then it is directly given out through the gills yes how do pond fishes survive pond fishes are able to survive because they also have gills no they all are able to survive because of the gills now the thing is sometimes gills are covered with certain flaps right so in your fish aquarium also you might see sometimes you will not be able to directly see the gills because they'll be covered with certain flaps that are there or sometimes they may not be covered so we have two kinds also yes bilwa please tell me your doubts right please please tell me your doubts in the meanwhile for those of you who want to write the pointers down this uh, it is there on the screen right or you can take a screenshot of it as well so that because with fishes especially i think it will be there you know sometimes we tend to have doubts with fishes mainly aapka bhai hello please tell me your name how do fishes sleep so this is actually a very interesting question i don't have a very clear answer to this even i don't know the answer to this i'll check and i'll let you know I know a little bit, but I'm not sure of it, which is why I'll not answer something which I'm not sure. I'll get back to you. Anita, put this doubt in the comment section, okay? Some fishes have lungs, so how do they live in water? Yes, okay, Mona, that's a very interesting question. All right, there are some fishes which you are telling me which have lungs, but they are not fishes, okay? Like you were telling me, you we have the whales, right? Whales that are there have lungs. and they are aquatic in nature so what they do no if you see they come up once in a while yes so they come up once in a while they take all the air that is there they keep it in they utilize it and then it is given out as well so in this case if you see here whales have lungs but we see that they take they don't take the dissolved oxygen but rather they come and they make sure that they take it up and they go back down yes okay all right seal have a very specific feature in their mouth okay can you be a little more specific i am not able to recall this yes ashwin sir had made a fun fact right when the fishes come out why do they die right see fishes like i told you and as you can see fishes are dependent on dissolved oxygen and these are the true fishes that are there now do not think about whales and you know dolphins that are there right so they are all mammals which are separate okay but in this case when you think about it the true fishes they are not able to survive because the only way they know to utilize oxygen is the dissolved oxygen they cannot take up gaseous oxygen as it is which is why they will not be able to survive yes very good tanya very good are we clear everybody about fishes give me a quick thumbs up on the chat yes are we clear very good very good yes very good dilip very good okay give me a quick thumbs up and i'm going to move a, a, a head you are stuti okay all right stuti i will remember that some fishes live without water Yes there are some fishes see with all animals i'll tell you because now you are learning no you will always be wondering see fishes that are there i mean in all animals you will always find some exceptions so what we learn about is the mass majority but there will be exceptions that are there 
how are the eyes protected they will have a membrane which protects the eyes okay so they have an outer membrane which is there which keeps them wherein the water will not affect it all right that's how they are protected very good very good now i'm going to move on to the next one which is the frogs that are there now again with frogs also we always hear them croaking right especially sometimes during monsoon season we will think we hear frogs which are croaking right and we see that their throat goes up and down like that sometimes yes we always notice these kind of things and if you have not seen a real frog right frogs would look something like this okay so these are some frogs which are there now an interesting thing about frogs no Yes, frogs are known as amphibians. Can any of you tell me why we call them as amphibians? I think I don't have. I don't think anything will be visible, so I'm going to write it here. Why do we call as amphibians? Yes, Manas is already telling me, ma'am. They are amphibians. When they are in water, they respire with their skin. Yes, wonderful, wonderful. They have lungs as well as gills. Yes, that is because Neha, like how Ajit is telling us, right? We call frogs as amphibians because frogs have the ability to live both on land as well as water. All right. Now, frogs have a very interesting life cycle. Okay, if you think about the life of the frog, it starts off something known as a tadpole. Okay, it starts off as a tadpole. All right. Now, in the case of tadpoles, we see that they are like small, like fish-like structures. So, in this case, we see that this tadpole will have gills in them that will help them breathe. So, very similar to the fishes that we learnt about. But as this tadpole starts growing, right, and it will become a adult frog. Now, this adult frog has lungs. Okay. So, when they are on land, we see that now they would have developed limbs and, you know, we see that they have the ability to hop around and everything. So, when they are on land, they use their lungs to breathe and it is very, like, just like us. But, of course, not exactly like ours, okay? The structure and everything will be slightly different. But now, these frogs can also swim. Now, the adults can swim also in water. And when they are swimming, we see that they have moist skin that is there through which we see that there is diffusion. So, again, the dissolved oxygen that is there will go in and it will diffuse out, right? Yes. So, we know that in ta tadpoles, it is gills. In adults, when they are on land, it is lungs. But when they are in water, they use their moist skin. Yes, they are also slimy. How do frogs sleep? You're all asking me about how animals are sleeping. I did not come prepared with this. But frogs also, right? We see that, see, in the case of most animals, sleep is very different, okay? So, this is something generic I'll tell you. Sleep is more like periods of time when they rest. So, it's not like how we go to sleep and, you know, we put bed and, you know, bed sheet and everything and we sleep. Sometimes they're very still and we see that they have this, if you look at the frogs, no? We see that they don't have, we see that they probably shut their eyes and they'll sleep, but I'll... Go do some proper research on this. Because I came prepared full with respiration. You're all asking me about how they sleep. But you can let me know in the comment section. So that I can, you know, um, give you the answer. Yes. Can you please tell me your name as well? They do hibernation. Yes, sometimes. Yes. Please tell me your name. All right, everybody. Are we clear about frogs? For those of you in the meanwhile, it's also there. They have slippery or moist skin. Tadpoles do not have lungs. No, they don't. They have gills. Okay. Hello, Prithvi. Hi. I hope that now you are able to see and you're able to follow whatever we are learning. Mahi is also here. Okay. Hi, Mahi. Yes, Prithvi is here. Very good, Simranjit. It's metamorphosis that happens how tadpoles become into adult frogs. Yes, everybody, we are clear with this so far. Very simple and easy. Okay, all right. Why frogs come out? Why the frog come out? Why they don't die? Why do frogs? Why they don't die? I mean, they all die. Eventually, we see that, you know, every living organisms will have a life cycle. They'll die. And, but frogs undergo transition, basically. If fishes live in water, how do they eat their food? They eat from the surroundings. So within, see, basically, if you look at fishes, no, we see that the smaller fishes, they feed on smaller organisms. There are even tinier organisms, some, you know, floating structures which will be there, which they will feed on. Sometimes there are bigger fishes which feed on the smaller fishes, right? 
Yes, no problem, no problem. Okay. Now here's a quick crossword that I want all of you to solve with me. Knowing all of you is going to be very easy. Okay, so this has some concepts from our previous session also, right? But I will still tell you. Okay, what is one inhalation plus one exhalation? That is one down. What is one inhalation plus one exhalation? So what do we call that? When we take one breath in and one out. Just one single. Dilip, the whole process is breathing. Look at what I have highlighted. It is one, two, three, four, five, six words. Breathing is not six words. Yes, very good. It is breath. Okay. One breath is one inhalation plus one exhalation. Breathing is the whole process of inhalation and exhalation. So let's fill this up. I hope that you are clear with this. This is one breath. Okay. Spelling is also important. Okay. There's no E after the H. It is breath. Now, next up is the process of releasing out air from the body. What is the process of releasing out air from the body? Or I will rephrase this to air rich in carbon dioxide. Very easy. I told you, no, all of you will get this. Exhalation. Now, what if, what is the process of taking in air rich, rich in oxygen into the body? What do we call that? That is three down. Process of taking in air that is rich in oxygen. Very good, very good. Yes, brilliant. All of you are so brilliant. This is inhalation, right? Wonderful. And last but not the least, that is there. Very good, yes. The muscular sheet that separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity in the case of humans. What is this known as? It's a dome-shaped structure. Very good, everyone. Very, very good. Yes, this is known as diaphragm. Yes, very good. Very good. So, very simple crossword, no? Very easy crossword that we solve together. It all tough, right? Okay. So now that we've got the answer, we have it with us and I'm going to move to the last part of today's class and probably the most important part, which is about plants, right? So do plants breathe? Yes or no in the chat? Okay, very quickly. Do plants breathe? Yes or no? What do you think? Yes, ma'am, plants, plants also breathe. Okay. But plants, I don't see plants, ma'am. No, there's no nose in plants. No, you don't find nose everywhere. But how somehow you are still telling me, ma'am, plants are breathing. Yes. Okay. Very good. Very good. Yes. You are all so brilliant. They all, yes, plants do breathe, right? Or more specifically, plants do gaseous exchange. Another question. Do plants respire? This question is different, no? When I'm saying breathing, it is gaseous exchange like you told me, right? But do plants respire? Yes or no? Yes? Very quickly. Do plants respire? Do, that means we know what is respiring, no? Resp respire is nothing but respiration. Do they do respiration like us? Oh, I am now seeing, ha. Some are saying, ma'am, no, no, only they do photosynthesis. Why will they do respiration? Plants also need energy, no? They will not be able to do anything if there is no energy. So, in this case, yes, plants do respire like us. Alright? Now, it's important to understand. See, when we say respire, we know it's nothing but respiration. Okay? And we see that respiration is nothing but the process where glucose is broken down to give energy. And like every living organism needs energy, whether it's a plant, whether it's an animal, it's a microorganism, everybody needs to get energy. So yes, plants also respire. Now we see that just like how we require oxygen for respiration to happen, plants are also taking oxygen, right? And they are also giving carbon dioxide, glucose is also getting broken down. Now the question is, where is this oxygen, is, where is this oxygen coming from? Yes? Now, some of you told me, ma'am, leaves, right? Stomata, you are all telling me. Very good. So, through stomata, it will enter into the body, right? Very good. But the thing is, it also comes through the roots, right? So, there are small openings in the root hair, right? Wherein we see that it will enter. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it. 
Now, like how all of you are telling me, stomata is there on the leaves. And we know that stomata are tiny openings which are present on the underside of the leaves, right? And we know that carbon dioxide, we know that oxygen will enter. So, in, in the case of respiration, we know that oxygen will enter and carbon dioxide will be given out. But stomata is also the site wherein carbon dioxide will enter for photosynthesis and oxygen is given out, okay? So, this is important to understand. Very good. Plants respire with the help of tiny openings called as stomata. Yes, very good. Root, stem and leaves are all sites where gaseous exchange happens. Very good. Yes, very good. So, like you told me, it's happening. Gaseous exchange in leaves happens through the stomata. But for respiration, all parts need oxygen, not just leaves. Which is why, like how Tanya was telling us, it happens through roots and stem. So, we see that in the roots also, we see that we normally say, you know, we have to loosen the soil. We always make sure that there are openings for air to enter. Whenever we pot plants, you no, know, we always make small openings that are there. Now, this is because we want openings. So, especially in the root hair, no? So, we know that there will be small hair, hair-like structures which will be there. We see that through this, we want the oxygen molecules to enter. Which is why we see that gaseous exchange takes place here. Even in the stem, we see that there are structures known as lenticels through which gaseous exchange takes place. So, in this case, we see that not just in leaves, but through stem and root also it will take place. Alright? So, we know that this is happening. Gaseous exchange is taking place. But I saw that a lot of you were telling me, ma'am, respiration is happening only in the night. Photosynthesis will happen only in the day. Right? So how many of you feel this? Very quickly. Respiration is taking only in the night. Or what do you say? Uh, photosynthesis is what's going to happen in the day. ROE is the soil. So basically, oxygen will be there as air pockets. Okay, they will be oxygen molecules or air will be there as air pockets inside the soil, and that's how they'll take it. That's why if the soil is too tightly packed, no, the roots will not be able to survive. And if the root is not able to survive, the plant will not be able to survive. Okay. No, ma'am, respiration both times, photosynthesis only during the day. Very good, very good. Yes, very good. You are all brilliant students. Very, very good. Now see, this is the most common confusion that is there, okay? Now the thing is, photosynthesis, as we know, is a process by which plants take in carbon dioxide, right? So of course, the arrows here, I don't think you are able to see the uh, labeling. Alright, so I am going to write this. So here we have... We know that photosynthesis is a process by which carbon dioxide and water will combine in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll to give us glucose, right? And we know that oxygen here is given out as a byproduct. Now, photosynthesis will happen only during the day because it requires sunlight. But respiration is a process by which oxygen enters into the plant and we know that it's utilized and glucose is broken down in the presence of oxygen to give out energy and carbon dioxide is given out as a byproduct. Respiration is constantly occurring. Okay, respiration is constantly occurring. Day and night it is happening. Just that the rate of it, right? For example, what happens is in the mornings or in the daytime, because even you have your photosynthesis happening, we see that more, relatively more amount of oxygen is given out. Which is why at night when photosynthesis stops, no, it's commonly said that you don't stand or sleep under a tree at night. Reason being that the level of carbon dioxide that is there is very, very high. But in the morning, you will not really realize because all that carbon dioxide that is given out will again come back inside for photosynthesis to take place, right? So this is important that you understand this difference. This is the main point of difference that exists, okay? Are we clear, everybody? Even the question that I asked you, a man is, uh, you know, there was a man who was sleeping under the night, uh, under the tree in the night, yes? Is it advisable for him to sleep? And if not, why so? They'll ask you this question. Ma'am, how do both processes occur during the day? See, even though your point of entry is the same, no? For example, we know that the point of entry is your stomata, right? So, we know that stomata is your point of entry. We see that the levels are always managed. That is why it is important that you know this. Yes? Are we clear, everyone? Give me a quick thumbs up. 
Yes, I know that I told you I'll wind it up in 15 minutes, but it's almost gone on for one hour. So we'll quickly wind up. Yes, yeah, so these are all the points that I have just discussed. I don't want to erase this, but I'll share it with you on Telegram. Don't worry, okay? Ma'am, that's why farmers use, yes, that's why farmers use earthworms to loosen the soil and also to improve the soil fertility. Very good, very good. Bilva, I also saw some questions that you had asked me. Please post it in the comment section right after this video. I will answer this, okay? All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm, I have a few more questions, but because, you know, we have wound, we are a little short on time, I'm going to quickly skip through this part. So well, let's quickly summarize what we learned today. We learned about breathing in other organisms, right? We know what is the difference between breathing and respiration. Breathing is more of a physical process, while respiration is more of a chemical process. In cockroaches, it happens through spiracles. In earthworms, through moist skin. In the case of fishes, we have the gills. In frogs, of course, we know it's moist skin and lungs. And in the case of plants, we know that the gaseous exchange takes place through stomata, lenticels in the stem and in the roots, right? Any doubts, anybody so far? Are we clear with everything? Are we clear? Give me a quick thumbs up and I'll give you a quick homework question as well. Yes, everyone. Very good. So here's your homework question for you. I'm going to be checking your homework questions. All right. Yes, animals have lungs, have noses. If so, if not, why do they not have noses? So animals, those who have lung, who, those who have lungs, no, they may not have noses, but they will have nostrils. Okay, they'll not have a nose-like structure, but they'll have small openings known as nostrils through which it will enter. Okay, Bilva, I hope that I have answered your question. There was one more. Can you please post that once again? Can you please post that once again? And for all the others, this is your homework question on screen. Explain how fishes breathe under water. Yes? All right. Yes, very good, very good. All right, everybody, I want you to answer in the comment section on how fishes breathe under water. Please do let me know, okay? All right, everybody, before we wind up, please make sure that you register for the Parent Club webinar that is happening and make sure that you get your parents as well, right? Because if your parents are, because we want your parents also to be involved in your journey, right? You are in your academic journey. You are just in seventh grade and there's a lot that you might be facing. And to talk about all of this, we have Chetna who's going to be coming live on the 5th of October at 12 p.m. along with Ankita Ma'am as well, all right? And this particular webinar will be led by Chetna, who's the vice president at Baiju's. She, of course, founded Chat Chat as well. And she's an XLRI gold medalist. And she'll have an amazing, it's going to be an amazing class. So do not forget to register. And I will be sharing this on Telegram as well, the session PDF. So please make sure that all of you are part of our Telegram community. The link is there in the description box. And of course, you know that we've got you covered no matter what, right? So do not forget to hit that like button, share this with your friends. And like I told you, if you're not convinced yet, you will please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. But I know now you'll be convinced that this is the place where you will get everything, right? Bilva, I know there was one more question. Drop it in the comment section. I'll answer immediately, okay? All right, everybody. So with this, I'll be signing off. Hoping to see you very soon again. Bye-bye and have a nice day.